Hi guys, it's Russell. Welcome to the channel. And today we're going to be doing a turntable animation in Blender for Instagram. So we're going to want to start off with our model at the origin and our 3D cursor at the origin. If it is not already, uh, you can press Shift S and then select cursor to world origin or just press 1. So we're going to start off with our camera, selecting our camera over in the view layer panel on the right, we can see that it's already positioned somewhere in the space, but we want to press Alt-G and Alt-R to zero those out. So over on the transform properties you should see it all go to zero. And then pressing 7 on the numpad and going to top view. I'm going to shift A and select circle. And then down on the left here I'm going to increase the vertices to 128. This makes the animation a little bit smoother. And then pressing S and scaling outwards. This is going to be the track or path that the camera follows. Okay, so now I'm just pressing F3 on the, on the keyboard and typing convert. And then selecting convert to and then convert to curve. I'm just going to rename this camera track. Okay, next I'm going to shift A and select empty plane axis. And I'm going to rename that focus point camera. This is going to be the focal point that the camera rotates around. Okay, so selecting the camera over on the right and then in the viewport, shift and left click the camera track. Then press control P and select follow path. So your camera will be maybe nested under the camera track over on the view layer panel on the right. or the scene collection, I should say. Okay, so selecting the camera and then going down to the object constraints panel on the right, we're gonna add an object constraint track to. And then in the target, we're going to select our newly created focus point camera. And then in the two field, we're going to change it from Y to negative Z. And then in the up pull down, we're going to select Y. Okay, so now we're just going to adjust the length of the animation by going down to the bottom timeline here and changing the end frame to 120. At 24 frames per second, this will make the animation about 5 seconds, which is a good amount in my opinion. And then we're going to select the camera track curve and then go to the object data properties panel on the right. Down into the path animation. And then we're going to update the frames to match the timeline length. So 120 should be the same here. So pressing zero on the numpad will give us the camera view. And if you wanted, you could press N on your keyboard and pull up this side panel here and go to the view section and then tick the box lock camera to view. And then selecting the focus point that we created. Over on the right, you can press G and then Z. And you can see that the camera will move and follow that focus point. And we can point it such that our object is more in frame. So you can go down to the bottom there and then press play on the timeline. And there you have it. The animation begins. 
Now we can see that the camera starts pointing directly at the back of the model. I don't want that, so I'm going to select the camera curve and then press R and then Z and pull it such that the first frame is uh, just a little bit at an angle. And if you wanted, if you felt that the camera was too close, you could also select the curve and press S and uh, adjust as needed. Okay, so the path animation is set. So now we can go over to the render properties panel on the right, or the output properties panel on the right. And for Instagram, the max width for a video is 1080 pixels. So we're going to just update that resolution X to 1080. And here you can change the folder that the animation saves to. You may be at the default PNG for the file format, but so we're going to update the file format to FF MPEG video. And then down in the encoding section, you can update to MPEG4. This is the preferred video format for Instagram and YouTube. Okay, so the render properties are set, the output properties are set. We're gonna go up to the compositing tab now. You should see something like this. And if you don't, you're gonna to wanna to tick the use nodes tick box there. We don't have anything quite yet, so you're just going to want to press F12 to render a frame. And then make sure that the backdrop here up on the top right is selected. And you can press Shift A, type View, and then select Viewer. And this will give you a preview of the render right there as a backdrop. You can move it around and scale it up and down by grabbing the handles there. So you can do a number of things here. I'm just going to do some very basic compositing. I'm going to add a hue or saturation node. And this can help kind of increase the saturation or vibrancy of the colors in your image. Can help with Instagram, making sure that your images pop. So we can see here, just updating the saturation to 1.2 and the backdrop should update, but I haven't quite connected there the image to the image viewer. So there you have it, the backdrop updates as you make changes. It's a little bit too saturated for me, so I'm gonna take it down to 1.1. You can do a number of different things here. Um, add a RGB curves node or levels. This is just a very basic take. So now we want to add a background image. You can press Shift A and type image. And then click on the open button and then navigate to the background image of your choice. And then to lay it behind our image, Shift A search alpha over. And connect the image up to the image there, image to the second image there, and then the image from the alpha over to the viewer and the composite nodes. And there you can see our background is laid behind our object. So we should be ready. We can go up to the render menu up on the top left and select render animation. This should take a few minutes depending on how long your animation is, whether or not you're using Cycles or Eevee, the quality of your computer. So that's going to save to the folder that we selected before, which was by default my temp folder on my C drive. So you can see there, there is the MP4 file. So clicking on it, we have a five second animation ready for upload.
Okay, so once you have that file on your computer and ready for upload, I would recommend using something like Google Drive, Microsoft OneDrive, Dropbox, or any other cloud-based storage service. Upload from your PC to one of these accounts, and then on your phone, log into this same account, download onto your phone, and then upload onto Instagram through your app. You can try to use the mobile mode uh, through the Chrome browser, but I found that it can be a little bit finicky and I just prefer this method. Um, it's a little bit a little bit simpler. So there you have it. There's one way to do a turntable animation for Instagram. I hope that helped guys. Let me know if you have any questions. Thanks.